So welcome back to Sprague River Homestead on another Top 5 Tuesday. Today we're going to go over our five biggest failures in homesteading. So one of my greatest failures here, uh, and I say me because I'm in charge of most of the gardening, is really choosing the wrong stuff for this climate. We had come out of Mississippi where you can grow anything at any time because the humidity is high. Uh, you get rainstorms almost every day there and the season is extremely, extremely long. So the thing I've learned here in the last uh, four or five years of gardening is that things here are very, very, very weather dependent um, and that you have to do a lot of things very differently to get crops to grow here. Uh, the best luck we had with tomatoes last year required a greenhouse. You can kind of see my tomatoes this year. They've been burned off a few times. Probably not going to get a whole heck of a lot. Probably should have got the greenhouses up and running this year, but we had such a mild winter that I didn't really think we were going to need them. Whereas, if you look over here, these are cauliflower. And my cauliflower plants are darn near as big as my tomatoes. I would say that's been one of the biggest challenges and one of my biggest failures is just trying to grow things that just don't grow here. After five years we're getting the hang of it though and we figured out that root crops, cold weather crops, anything and everything that'll take a freeze is the way to go. Probably the second greatest failure on this homestead has been the Harbor Freight Greenhouse. Started off with good intentions. We got it on sale. I think we paid like five fifty for it. Um, I think at this point I'm at about $2,500 in new panels and new roof panels and extra framing on the inside to hold the whole thing together. Now depending where you're at, this is probably a great greenhouse and by and large we love it. Uh, the problem we have is because of where it sits, this puppy will sometimes take 30 mile an hour winds and uh, let's be honest, Harbor Freight stuff, pretty much made in China. <laughs> Not the most high quality of construction, and uh, she's taken quite a beating. Like I said, we finally got it to where I think it's going to be okay, at least for a few years, until the next bit of panels wear out. But, you know, if you're going to do a greenhouse like this, I probably should have looked at uh, winds and snow, and we get enough sun that the panels pretty much disintegrated in about two years, so... Probably going to chalk that up as one of our greatest failures. Hopefully turned around, but still one of our failures. All right, so next, probably one of the biggest failures we did to ourselves was that we moved from a very, I will say, mild climate in the south in Mississippi to a very harsh climate here in Oregon. When we first moved four or five years ago, we did not have a quad. We did not have a tractor. We brought a two-wheel drive Chevy truck. Now, while it doesn't seem too bad to have one truck, what that meant was when we got a bunch of snow, one, we didn't have anything like a tractor to try and even plow the road, and two, Nikki was forced to stay home because she didn't have a truck to go out. Now, thankfully, we had in-laws or my in-laws lived close by. They had an additional four-wheel drive that they could loan Nikki to be able to go to the town to get stored, check the mail, etc. But we really did not prepare ourselves with vehicles or equipment prior to moving up here. We've kind of learned along the way of what works and what doesn't. And we've gotten by and we've kind of escaped by. But there are going to be times that we, uh, we put ourselves in a bad situation because we were not prepared for the amount of winter snow and the weather, the harsh extreme weather here. So another thing that's been a bit of a failure here has been picking the wrong chickens for the climate. So when we were in Mississippi, um, I raised a lot of uh, Orpingtons and New Hampshires and great big combed breeds. Really nice, pretty birds that handled pretty much all seasons. We got them here and while they took the heat pretty well, the frost killed them as far as um, we lost all their combs on pretty much every rooster we had. So we've kind of done something differently and gone with uh, shorter comb breeds that maybe don't take the heat quite as well, but they take the winter better. Um, of course, you know, you might be wondering if they frostbite and lose the comb, what's the big deal in that? Well, when they frostbite and start to fall off, they bleed a lot. Uh, your chance of infection is pretty good. And if you've raised chickens before, you know that 
blood and chickens don't go hand in hand real well, so you get a lot of picking problems and issues. And it's just not good for the birds. You know, I, how would you like to have, you know, your ear frostbite off? So we had to make some changes, go with some different birds, and uh, kind of do things a little differently. So probably the last biggest failure we've had is that we've underestimated predators. Now in Mississippi and here we've had predator problems. Mississippi not as bad, but it was a little bit more of an urban-ish area. It's kind of out in the country, but it wasn't such deep in the woods like here. So we've lost chickens and that and poultry to predators. And here we thought we had a chain link fence where we had some geese and we actually had a bobcat basically part out a goose overnight and take it through a chain link fence piece by piece, unfortunately. So that's the, probably one of the biggest things. And it's, it's heartbreak. You go out there and you realize you didn't do enough to protect your livestock away from predators. And in Mississippi, I mean, we, we lost an entire flock of chickens to raccoons overnight. We didn't even know we had a raccoon problem until the chickens were gone. Uh, another time we were out free ranging some chickens and a fox came through during a rainstorm and killed the entire flock except for two. Um, you know, it's it's been bigger predators here, like Kanan said, with the bobcat. We've got huge coyotes that are getting braver and braver all the time. So that becomes an issue. As far as the big stuff, the really big stuff, the cougars and the black bears that are here, so far so good. We've been really fortunate there. Um, you know, but it's something we think about all the time. So that's it. Those are the five biggest mistakes or the biggest failures we've had homesteading for your Top 5 Tuesday. So what are your failures? You know, we all we all have a few when we get started. Leave them down in the comments. We want to hear what, what you've done and how you've done it differently. So that's it. What's the catchphrase? <laughs> Happy homesteading. Happy homesteading. We'll see you next time.